Hey, my name is Ian Westerman. I'm the head pro here at EssentialTennis.com, where it's our mission to bring passionate instruction to passionate players like you. Welcome to this video where we're going to be talking about how to be successful with your drive volley or topspin volley, which I actually prefer that terminology. I'll tell you why in just a second. This question goes out to Louis Lay, who wrote and said, I would like to see a video on the drive volley. I was taught to volley with a short backswing and short follow through and just to punch the ball. This is great when the ball is fast, but when I get a slow ball to volley, I don't know what to do because the drive volley is a shot I've never practiced and never used. Okay, Louis, good question. There's gonna be two parts to this lesson. The first one has to do with your perspective on the courts and what you can see. And I'm gonna illustrate that quickly by grabbing C-cam. And what we're gonna do here is something I like, I like to demonstrate for my clinic students frequently. And that is just a simple exercise to show you, to illustrate how much of your opponent's side of the court is actually available to you to hit to. And this is important. This is kind of the foundation of what will, what options we have as far as the dry volley is concerned. So from here, I'm six feet tall, even. If I stand in the middle of the baseline and I look over to the other side of the court, you'll see here on C-cam that if I look over the net to the other side, I can't see any of the other side. I can see the other side looking through the net, but not over the top of it. So that means from back here, if I'm gonna hit a ball at eye height or shoulder height, certainly, the ball must come up at least a little bit to make it over and then come back down to the other side. Now, if I take a few steps in, halfway between the baseline and the service line, and I hold C cam, you'll see that I still can't see any of the other side of the court maybe a couple inches right around the baseline, but from back here, I'm still needing to get the ball over the net before it comes back down again to the other side. If I take a few more steps into the service line, you'll see that things drastically change. There's a huge difference between no man's land and the service line. From here, now I can see probably most of no man's land now, not quite up to the service line, but close. So from the service line, if I hit a ball at shoulder heights, I can now start to be able a little bit to hit directly at my opponent's side of the court. This is really important. A couple more steps again, and you'll see that the court really, really opens up. Now I'm halfway between the net and the service line, and I can see the majority of the courts on the other side. So what does this mean? This means that if you're gonna hit your dry volley from the middle of no man's land, you cannot actually hit a straight drive at the other side of the court. It's possible, there's gravity in there, so we could probably drive the ball a few inches over the net and still have it go in play. But really, if you're gonna hit a drive volley from back here, which is where most of them are hit, probably between the middle of no man's land and the service line, we need a little bit of shape. We need a little bit of curve or arc to our shot. And that's what the second part of this lesson is gonna be about. So now we've got Ira and Kirby on the court. Kirby's gonna be feeding Ira some floating balls. These are, these are the shots that typically you're gonna have the option to hit a drive volley on. And as I mentioned at the outset, I like the, I like the phrase topspin volley as opposed to drive volley. I'm actually gonna ask Ira to hit a couple balls out of the air off of Kirby's floating feed first, just trying to hit a, dry, a dead straight drive through the ball. So technique wise from the side, from the side angle, you're gonna see him drop his racket to just about contact height and then go straight through it out towards his target before he turns the racket over and finishes across his body. Uh, so Ira, so these are very low percentage and Ira's gonna be making contact somewhere in the middle of no man's land. He's a little bit taller than me, but unless you're like six, seven, you can't hit a chest height ball from here and actually hit it directly at the other side. So we're gonna see consistency be a little bit on the low side. Let's see a couple drives, Ira. So the thing is, if Ira's just a little bit high with his shot, it's gonna go too far, it's gonna go deep. If he's just a little bit low with it, he's gonna hit the net. Nice shot. And then right in between there, there's a little window, it's probably just a couple inches high where he's gonna make the shot. <laughs> All right, good. So 
What we want to see instead is at least a little bit of upward acceleration as he hits the ball. We want to lift the ball, give it some forward rotation so that it has some shape and it curves down into the court. We're not looking for a loopy shot back, but somewhere in between what he was just hitting, which was pretty dead flat and straight, and a loopy shot. So we want some curve, and we also want some drive, a little bit of both. Nice. So we're looking for a ball that crosses the net by like 18 inches, maybe two feet. Nice. And has some good shape to it so that it has consistency. Nice. Wow. Nailed it. Nice job. So great demonstrations there by Ira. The lower, flatter ones are going to be much lower percentage. That's why I don't like the phrase dry volley. I really prefer topspin volley. If you're close to the net, remember what, what I could see. If you're well inside the service line and hitting the ball at shoulder height, okay, now you can start to hit at your, other, at your opponent's side of the court. If you're back behind the service line, we need at least a little bit of shape to it. So th that's my top tip for the dry volley. Hope you enjoyed this video. If so, do me a favor and click like. Also down in the description below, I've got a link to some coaching that will show you how to hit the most accurate and consistent ground strokes of your life. It'll just cost you a buck, so go check that out. Thank you for watching. If you have any comments or questions, leave those in the section right down below. Thanks for watching, take care, and good luck with your tennis. For hundreds of free digital tennis lessons, head over to EssentialTennis.com right now. More wins and more fun on the court is right around the corner. You'll even get a free gift just for stopping by. Simply click the link at the top of any page.